from News Nation uh, for her own show March 1st. We're putting her to work early tonight because of this extraordinary news. She's joining us now uh, via Zoom. Ashley, what is your top line? One, thanks for working early. I assume you're home watching, like the rest of us, this all unfold. What is your yeah. top line reaction? You've been in the business a long time. Have you ever seen anything quite like this? The answer is no, and I'm not alone. And I have a top line that bounces right off what you just said. What took so long? Why did this happen? Why are we only seeing this kind of a show of force now? And there may be a good reason for that. All hands on deck needed to be inside that building securing 50 men and women whose lives were in danger. So where the senators had to sequester either in place, in cupboards, under desks, in offices, uh, that became the priority. You saw the guns drawn, you saw the barricades that, that the, the security had to put across the Senate chamber doors, you saw the, the glass being broken so that those could breach the Senate chamber. All of those senators needed to be rushed um, with the fastest pace into security zones. So all of the security personnel that existed within 100 yards of that building, that was priority one. It's why you didn't see them. It's why it looked like there was only a handful of Capitol Police. Number two, only the Capitol Police were on deck for this event. This event is pro forma. This event has never been like this. Yes, the president said something that might encourage people to march on the Capitol. There was no inclination that it would be like this. Perhaps that's the folly that will be uh, assessed as we go forward, and there will be massive changes and heads will roll. But at least we know why. We didn't see a lot of visible law enforcement outside and in camera purview. They were protecting people whose lives were virtually at stake. Why were their lives at stake? The magnetometers and all the security devices that are in place on the Capitol, you, me, senators, aides, all have to go through every day, those were breached. Nobody was walking through a magnetometer. Any kind of weapon in a state that allows it, in a protectorate that allows it, in, in, in the Capitol that allows it, anybody could carry any weapon into that chamber. They were at the chamber doors and the glass was breached. It doesn't take more than one semi-automatic to take out a number of lives. That was priority number one. Now you got to ask me, why is, how is this going to take so long? Why are there so many people and where are they and where's everyone's just uh, stationed and, and what's the strategy? It is now a room by room, by closet, by corner, by desk sweep. They literally have to cover every square foot of the Capitol building with security forces so that they don't have that lone gunman with a high-powered rifle who has his sights set on pick your senator. Uh, so that is going to take an enormous amount of time. And the senators are not safe until that happens. Think of a school lockdown, how long it takes to get the kids out. You have to sweep every possible sniper area and, and, and sequestered area. I hope this is starting to make sense and I know I'm going on a long time, but your next question to me, I hope, is gonna be, what is in it for these people on the screen? All these people who have taken their masks down and blatantly decided I am not afraid to show who I am, they are on camera. Every news camera, every Instagram, every Facebook that you can see them all recording and going live, every single part of the Capitol building is on surveillance. There is so much visible evidence right now that will be combed minusculely, and we will find people, actual people, actual identities, who will be prosecuted? And this is not small. This is not marching after curfew. These are federal crimes. And I can list them all for you. However, I don't have enough time on this broadcast. I can just tell you that right now, they are facing probably one of the more serious areas of the law. And that is US Code 1752. Okay, and there are myriad different sections in that law that could garner up to 30 years of incarceration for some of the infractions that we are actually seeing on tape. That is good evidence in court. And I am very worried for many of these people who may have been swept up <clears throat> in a movement, in an excitement, unaware 
of the enormity of their action. These are federal crimes. These are not break and enters. These are not curfew violations. These are federal crimes. This is obstruction of justice. That alone will get you 20. And if these crimes run sequential, you could be imprisoned for 50 to 60 years. I cannot impart upon our audience more what is happening with these people, regardless of their emotion, regardless of whether you agree with how they feel. They are angry. They have their right to be angry. We all do. We don't have the right to destroy property and to breach federal property and to endanger the lives of federal officials. We do not have the right to endanger or chase federal police officers. We do not have the right to brandish weapons against a federal police officer. That can be a stick, that can be a flag. There is a world of hurt, I am sad to report, for thousands of people who engaged in what you're watching right now. Ashley, uh, we, as always, appreciate your perspective on this and your experience. And I just want to update folks at home and also get your reaction to some of the responses that we're receiving, starting with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. She says, quote, and this is on Twitter, I join President-elect Joe Biden in calling for the assault on the Capitol and our nation's public servants to end and, as he said, allow the work of democracy to go forward. I'll piggyback on that. Chuck Grassley said today, the violent attack on the U.S. Capitol was an attack on American democracy itself. My question to you is, as President-elect Joe Biden watches this, the country is divided. You have 70-plus million people who did not vote for Joe Biden, uh, of which many of those uh, showed up today uh, to protest. What happens now to the process as we are just 14 days shy of the inauguration, the transition of power, and by all accounts, President Trump still not relinquishing control or conceding this election. What happens I now? Rest assured for, I want to rest assured for the viewers who are watching, it may be unpleasant, but the process will continue, okay? It may be joyous, it may be unpleasant. This process is not going to be thwarted. January 20th will happen, the inauguration will happen. Maybe it won't happen outside. Maybe those risers are damaged. Maybe the Capitol Police, the Metropolitan uh, you know, Washington Police and the National Guard realized maybe we didn't think this through and we don't have enough plan time you know, to get in motion for January 20th. It will happen. If it has to happen via Zoom, it will happen. That's the law. It's the Constitution. Again, love it or hate it. But Rest assured, for the majority of our viewers right now, I don't believe the majority of our viewers enjoy seeing a Wendy's burn down. And I don't believe the majority of our viewers like to see the Capitol building having a crowbar taken to some of those windows and have uh, enjoy watching Capitol security having to brandish their weapons as the windows to the chamber are being broken down. So rest assured for the majority of you who are not happy with what you're seeing, on either side of this polarization. You are okay. The process will continue. Our bigger bet is to, to figure out how we bring these very, very polarized sides together and the radical sides together. The people who are radical amongst the Trump supporters you're seeing now are not representative of all Trump supporters. The people who are radical who burned down a Wendy's are not radical of all Democrats. There are more of us. There are more of us who see all sides. So I think that should, you know, assuage your worry and, and hopefully bring your angst down. In the meantime, we have a bigger deal today. And we have a, and we have a, a soul searching today, knowing that this doesn't happen in America. I am heartbroken to think of what those in Azerbaijan are thinking. I am heartbroken to think about what those in Afghanistan are thinking or in the Congo. And they're looking at Americans who, who always have been the shining hill on, you know, the shining you know, city on the hill. Uh, pedantically maybe telling the world this is what you need to ascribe to be. That picture is not what you need to ascribe to be. And I think many of them are suggesting that we need to reassess who we are. This is wrong and we, and we all know it, but there will be consequences for this. And there will be utterly dangerous and, and punishing consequences for it. I am worried that many of these people who, who, who are fair to have their opinion were not aware of the 
severity of their actions, of the criminality of their actions. They may have just felt it was a march. Ashley, do you think this will be a seminal moment in more ways than one? I'm curious about what you think will happen when Congress reconvenes to continue the process that started early this morning. Do you think this changes the tenor of anything? Yes, 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 and yes. And I'll tell you why. Maybe not before 3 o'clock Eastern, but Ted Cruz had to be pulled to the floor of the Senate well, and gunmen had to escort him into a safe chamber. And that happened to Nancy Pelosi. And that happened to, you know, Hirono. That happened to congressmen who were in the gallery. That happened to senators who were in the well, whether they were Republican or whether they were Democrat, whether they ascribed to the vote and the protest in the Senate today or whether they didn't. But it came to their back door. And then it broke down their back door. And then it was in their living room. And when they ran upstairs to hide under their master bedroom bed, they were in the bedroom with guns. There is nothing more chastening than knowing your personal life is at stake because of the words you use. So I suspect there will be a real come to Jesus moment among everybody. I mean, I hope, and I hope I'm not Pollyanna here, but I do suspect that because the guns came so close to all parties concerned, there will be a caucus where all parties want to partake. And I do believe this will be a seminal moment, like you suggested, where at least the tenor, at least the rhetoric, will be assuaged because they know the power of it. And Ash, I want to point out real quick, uh, just saw a news alert here that Joe Manchin, senator from West Virginia, conservative Democrat, says the Senate intends to finish certifying the election tonight. Quote, these thugs are not running us off, end quote. So he's yeah. leaving the door open there that perhaps... Uh, Congress will get back to its uh, process tonight. Uh, we'll see if that happens or not. It <laughs> seems unlikely, but you have to admire no. at least the wherewithal it's to, to want to go forward. Well, and I think the question, it begs unlikely. the question, Ashley, excuse me, it begs the question that uh, can they can reconvene in the chamber or do they have the option to reconvene elsewhere if they can set yeah. up a safe place? Marnie, I, I, I have it on authority that they have already started um, canvassing safe areas uh, for this kind of a congregation. The Senate chamber has been breached. The windows are broken. The sweep is not finished. That is not a place anybody needs to be. That is not in the immediate offings of the plan. Ashley, so one quick, let me Senate. interject one quick thing. Uh, just literally a second ago from the AP, officials declare the Capitol secure, quote, secure, nearly four hours after violent pro-Trump occupiers disrupted the electoral count. So officials have now at uh, 451 Central, 551 Eastern Time, declared the Capitol secure four hours into this chaos. Didn't mean to interrupt, so just wanted to arrived. let you know that. Rob, the legions arrived, you know, they needed the manpower to go door to door, closet to closet, desk to desk. You saw that Nancy Pelosi's office had been breached. There were people sitting at the desk. They were sitting at the speaker's desk in the well. So they needed to, every single area needed to be swept and you can't do that with the Capitol Police don't have enough manpower, but you can do that once the National Guard arrived, once the Capitol Police, once the uh, Washington DC police force arrived. So they, they got the manpower. That's why you didn't see it outside. You saw it inside where the lives were in danger. So they were able to maybe make use of those legions of, of actual bodies, manpower, you know, flat vests to go and do that. And, and thank God that's happened. I am so relieved to hear that they're at least past that immediate danger, which means- Ashley, one more interruption. I apologize, but you know how breaking news can be. Sadly, we've gotten an alert now that the woman who was shot inside the Capitol when protesters stormed the building has died, according to law enforcement. So today has, as of this minute, yielded one fatality. There was some video, I think, Joe, yeah. you showed me this a minute ago, the woman who appeared shot, and according to witnesses at the scene, was critically hurt. Uh, we've learned that uh, that protester, who I believe was draped in a Trump flag at the time she was shot uh, has passed away. Again, sorry for the interruptions, but you know information no, is coming you. in every second. And
interrupt away because this is how it works. Breaking news uh, trumps everything. Listen, the, the ballistics uh, won't, won't be uh, unimportant in that case. We will want to know whose bullet killed her. We'll want to know if it was a bullet from a protester or a bullet from a police officer. And that may not matter necessarily for the police officers. It may matter, matter mightily for a Trump supporter if that's what happened because that, that is what you call felony murder. So uh, there, there will be charges there. Hopefully that's caught on camera. I can't imagine why not. That place is crawling with cameras everywhere. There will be so much video evidence in these cases, and there will be hundreds and hundreds, I dare say thousands of prosecutions for these infractions. These are federal laws. These are federal prosecutions and federal property. It is not a small affair. And everybody was thrilled to have their masks off for whatever their political reasons. It was a stupid move if they were trying to conceal their identities and save themselves from a federal prosecution. But um, but listen, I, I think it, it is super critical now to get back to that decision about the, the vote. Can they get back to the business of government? And that is yes. I just don't think it might happen in the well. I think it could happen in a safer environment because we're still not safe outside. You can see these pictures. This is not under control. The business of government is what these people are here for. So, but I do know this, and that is that Senate staffers were seen uh, hastily gathering up documents, gathering up laptops and electronics before they fled to safer uh, confines. So they at least have some of the work that they need, probably not all of it. But like I said, there may be a real difference of opinion. A prism may have changed for many of these lawmakers now that they know it was coming from inside the House. One quick question, Ashley, before you came on the air here. There was talk about whatever will happen tonight. Do you think the Republican senators and House members who were objecting to this electoral count uh, have made the point? And after what happened today, do you think they say, enough, let's move on and make this what we all thought it was going to be in the first place, which was just basically a formality? That's a, I mean, that's a million-dollar question, isn't it? Um, I, I do believe that philosophically, and maybe their adrenaline might pay, uh, play a part. If you've ever been a victim of a crime, your philosophy changes on prosecution. So these people have been victims of a crime. They've been victims of a crime. They had to run for their lives. They may very well change how they feel. They may very well silently change how they feel. Maybe they won't give their address. That speech they crafted so carefully may not be appropriate in the new environment. But I, you know, look, everyone's battling being primaried. They have to respond to their constituents. But I dare say some constituents may look at this and, and really not be pleased, you know? They may also look to the words of their leader. They may, they may look to the words of, of Mike Pence on tweet, and they may look to the words of President Trump on tweet and then the, the Facebook video, and they may say, that was enough, I'm happy with it. Or they may say, not at all. This is a disaster and a woman is dead. You know, that, that could play into a lot of people's um, decision making. Well, a lot to take in and looking back at some of the comments that uh, President-elect Joe Biden made at about 3 o'clock uh, this afternoon, uh, calling on the president to stop what was happening and uh, really acknowledging that this is an assault on the rule of law and, and our, our American undertakings of uh, the will of the people. Uh, it, is, it is a challenging day, to say the least, uh, but it is a call for unity, Ashley, as you say, and as so many others have echoed from Washington, D.C. tonight. The question is, how how do you do that in the midst of a tumultuous transfer of power uh, yeah. that is not over yet? Um, that is another question that uh, we don't have an answer to. But as I look at Twitter, which we often do in these moments for updates from our leaders, uh, I am not seeing any updates from President Trump or President-elect Joe Biden as far as what is next, because the situation is not over. Uh, I mean, the call for calm has gone out, but now you have law enforcement in harm's way trying to disperse these crowds as we are now approaching three minutes to the D.C. curfew. Uh, so I, I think the big question is uh, what to anticipate next. And if the police were caught off guard earlier today, it can't fool me once, right, as the saying goes. So what are they doing now to, uh, to control the situation and to communicate to prepare for what could be next? So, the, so President Trump, and, and to his credit, uh, he mobilized the entire 
National Guard. That's not small. So we've got the entire National Guard now on standby, probably strategizing and now actually doing location surveillance and positioning, right? Because it won't just be here, it'll be all through town. Curfew violation is the least of these people's worries. That's like a you know misdemeanor. That, that, that is the least of their worries. And so the Biden comment that when he took to the cameras and released it, that will play over and over and over again. Will he tweet? Maybe not. Maybe that's not what he wants to be known for is, is his presidential tweets. Maybe he'll take the opposite tack, say, I'm going to give a presidential address when needed. He actually beat President Trump to the punch. That may carry some weight. Um, what will President Trump do next? Will, will he beseech the protesters to, to settle and, and go home? He's asked them. But he's also given them the caveat that, but I'm still deeply aggrieved by these election results. So will they take it seriously? You know, that's a million dollar question. But I do want to continue to watch what happens uh, on Capitol grounds and in, within the Capitol. I'm assuming, like, if they say everything's cleared in the Capitol, they've got them all out of the rotunda of, of the senator's offices. Uh, I mean, that to me was horrifying to see them sitting at the speaker's desk. I mean, Mike Pence had just been sitting there. All those notes, they're photographing and they're Facebooking live. Here's what I want our audience to be aware of. What's happening right now could result in anything from carrying a dangerous weapon on, on, uh, you know, on federal property and government grounds, injuring law enforcement in the process. That happened. Threatening law enforcement. We saw a law enforcement agency running for his life as the mob kept ascending the staircase. That is a breach of federal law, and it's not a good one. Obstruction of justice, that one alone carries 30 years. 30 years. Trespassing sedition, treason, assault, conspiracy, probation violations. If any of these people have a probation violation and happen to be open carrying, back to the Huskow. So I, again, I, I just don't know how informed many of these people were, whether they were well-meaning and just wanted to get their message across and then followed like lemmings as lawbreakers led them into what could be the ruination of their professional and personal lives. I, I, I distress mightily. They are upset. These people have a voice. They, they, they deserve to be heard. Like it or lump it, uh, they deserve to be heard. No I one deserved wait. this. No one, no one, no matter how well-meaning, could possibly think it's okay to storm the Capitol, break windows, and go into the chamber. I mean, yes, okay. everyone wants to be heard within the bounds of the law. So no one could have thought, yeah, let me go break some windows in the Capitol and let me yeah. storm the place. And that seems OK, because I'm yeah. well-meaning. Uh, you know I mean, they knew what they, they were they doing. They said that. They said that. They, they actually tweeted out and they said, hey, this is, this is nothing compared to burning Wendy's and looting. Those are crimes. Those are damage. We're not damaging anything. Look, they damaged windows. Did they steal statues? I don't know yet. Did they crush some of the furniture in Pelosi's office? I don't know yet. There's so much we don't know yet. But I think in many of their minds, it wasn't the same, and it might be a misdemeanor. Again, ill-informed, maybe young uh, people who are following. Um, you know, there was a directive from, from President Trump, meet me down there, I'll be down there. That's very inspiring, you know, and it almost gives you the carte blanche, the freedom, sort of the cover to, to follow, you know, follow the leader. And, and maybe those in the back of the pack or the younger ones among them weren't really sure that had they, did they know that they had actually breached a perimeter? Because once that was, once those barricades were pushed away and the, and the police went running, maybe the back of the pack didn't know. And again, I am not standing up for anybody. I always just want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt because that's what the law does. All right, Ashley Banfield joining us tonight as uh, this breaking news coverage continues out of Washington, D.C. Ashley, thank you for the perspective. Again, welcome to the team. We're glad to have you. Let's get back to the matter at hand, uh, which is the situation unfolding outside the Capitol. We still have protesters face-to-face uh, -face with uh, Metro D.C. police. And I'm watching our Brian Enton on the big screen here in the studio. He appears as though he is standing by, although they haven't said toss. So, Brian, I'm going to take a chance, and I'm going to toss to you. Uh, tell us what you're seeing. At last check, we had talked with Tom Negevin. Uh, he took some tear gas, continued to walk with the protesters. Uh, what's going on where you are? 
Yeah, Marnie, I think that the situation has calmed down quite a bit over the last 30 minutes. I heard you mention earlier uh, that they said that the Capitol is now secure, and that is the sense that we're getting right here uh, on the west side of the Capitol. Let me kind of show you what, what the situation is. You remember our, our pictures from about an hour ago when literally the, this entire side of the Capitol was full of... Uh,